I'd like to welcome everybody from Upstate Cancer Center. This year, an unprecedented time has been even more remarkable in demonstrating the incredible strength, courage, and resilience of cancer survivors and patients undergoing active cancer care. We've all learned much during this time and we will emerge stronger together. We wanted to celebrate together in person for our 24th National Cancer Survivors Day, but we are happy to bring you this special event in partnership with the Rosemont Gifford Zoo. We will be back next year for our 25th Cancer Survivors Day and hope to see you then. We know many of you are animal lovers and have favorites here at the zoo just like we do. And although you can't see them in person, we really hope you're going to enjoy the video clips that we put together of some of the favorite animals here at the zoo. Hi, my name's Ashley Shepard and I'm one of the elephant collection managers here at the Roseman Gifford Zoo. I'm here today to give a shout out to Talia Moore, a three-year cancer survivor whose favorite animal is elephants. One of my favorite facts about the elephants is that unlike many species, elephants actually don't get cancer very often due to an extra pair of chromosomes that they have within their body and system. And there's actually been much research done to use elephant chromosomes to help others learn how to survive and fight cancer. So thanks for your submission, Talia. questions about the elephant's trunk. The next question was, can elephants use their trunk like a straw to drink water? That's a really great question. Even though it looks like a straw, as you can see behind me with my lovely assistant, Karina, generally elephants, what they do when they're drinking water with their trunk is they pull water up into their trunk and stop it at a certain point. Just like us, when you get water all the way up in the top of your nose, it doesn't feel very good, so they know exactly where to stop the water, and they actually blow that back into their mouth instead of drinking through it like a straw, and they can hold between one and two gallons of water in their trunk at a time. we got about an elephant's trunk is how many pounds can an elephant lift with just their trunk? That's a great question as well. An elephant can lift about 4% of their body weight with just their trunk alone and they can push or pull about half of their body weight. So for an elephant like Karina behind me, she can lift between 200 and 300 pounds just with her trunk. was about music. The question was, many elephants respond to music. Have we here at the Roseman Gifford Zoo ever tried music enrichment with elephants? And it would be really interesting to see how they react. The answer to that question is yes. We use music enrichment quite a bit here at the zoo. Not necessarily people playing music, but we use radios, iPhones, speakers, all kinds of things to replicate what music might sound like in live time. Romani behind me here is one of our particular elephants that loves to listen to music a lot. Romani seems to really respond well to Adele. She also likes a lot of other easy listening music. But Romani is a special elephant here in our herd as well because she likes to make her own music. When Romani's outside on exhibit in her own time, she'll often find a rock or a stick to bang along the cables or along the bollards and make her own music and she's actually very, very talented. She even plays the harmonica. Hi, I'm Deb DiLorenzo, and I'd like to give a shout out to Archie Kalkis, who is a three and a half year survivor of cancer. 
One of Archie's favorite animals are penguins, and I'm the penguin keeper here at the zoo. Hi everyone, my name's April. I'm the bird collection manager here at the Rosemont Gifford Zoo, and I'm in our Penguin Coast exhibit right now. I'm gonna be answering some of your questions that you submitted on Facebook for us to answer about our humble penguin colony. First question that we got was asking what they eat. So our colony of penguins actually eats three different kinds of fish on a daily basis. They eat herring, which are pretty large. Uh, they also eat capelin and smelt. Uh, each bird has their individual preference and they all actually change preferences through the year. We have some birds that eat herring when they're getting ready to molt and eat smelt otherwise and vice versa with other birds. It just depends on the time of year and what their nutritional needs are. live to be up to about 15 years old. Penguins in human care don't really have to worry about much. They have free health care, they get free food, they don't have to worry about predators, so they usually live about twice as long and can live to be close to 30 years old. The two oldest birds that we have in our colony are Avita and Lola. They hatched out on the very same day and they're both 24 years old. The next question was how fast can penguins swim? Humboldt penguins are in the middle of the size range for penguins, so these guys can swim at the top range of about 12 to 15 miles an hour. Some of the larger birds that have more muscle mass can swim much faster than that, but these guys top out at about 15 miles an hour. One of our guests asked about rocks and what our birds build their nests out of. Um, we have rocks out here on our Penguin Coast exhibit, all sorts of different shapes and sizes of pebbles for them to be able to collect and bring back and build a nest with. Um, this is really important for pair bonding as both males and females collect rocks to build the nest um, and they will continually collect rocks through the entire nesting period. Um, there are some cartoons and things that show birds bringing back one specific rock that really solidifies the pair bond. That's not necessarily true. It's more about building the nest and making sure that that nest is in the best shape possible for them to be able to hatch out eggs. And we did have one question asking about our penguin pool and if it's temperature controlled. Our penguin pool usually stays around 52 degrees the entire winter season. We keep it nice and warm for them, and 52 degrees doesn't sound very warm for us, but that's just perfect for a penguin. These guys normally swim in cold water currents in the wild to find their food, so 52 degrees is just fine. panda keeper here at the Roseman Gifford Zoo. I'm giving a shout out to Liliana Mancini, a four-year cancer survivor, um, and her favorite animals are red pandas. I've been at the zoo full-time for five years. I've been working with the pandas since I was a part-time person, and they just really grabbed my heart. They're very interesting animals biologically. They have some really unique traits, and their personalities are all just so different and interesting that I really just fell in love with them. So they don't have a prehensile thumb, they can't move their thumb around like this, but they can grab things like that. And in the wild they use that to grab bamboo branches because they really like the fine thin leaves. So we've actually taken that behavior and captured it and taught them how to hold paintbrushes. We do different events to raise money for conservation. One of them is called Art Gone Wild and our pandas will actually hold a paintbrush and fling it across a canvas and we'll get a nice little painting. Yep, we're doing some enrichment right now and some training. So he's actually, they have a false thumb so they can hold things and we've taught him how to hold a paintbrush and we're having him do a little painting. Yep, sometimes he grabs it with his teeth first and then he grabs it with his paw after. One of my favorite parts um, being a red panda keeper is when we did start to have babies again. We have cameras in the nest boxes so we can see mom give birth and watch her as she takes care of the cubs. 
we're coming back at all hours of the night and morning to check in on her. We were in at eight, we are in at midnight, we are in at five in the mornings. Um, and it was just really cool to be there at those different times and watch her take care of those babies. It's been really, really awesome and really rewarding. The most important thing I think that people need to know about zoos is there's so much going on for conservation. Our zoo participates in different conservation projects as you travel around to other zoos. All of them have different conservation projects going on around their zoo and also worldwide. And um, without these zoos doing these major conservation projects, there's lots of animals that would be lost or even more critically endangered than they are today. So it's something we're all very proud of. My name is Tammy Singer and I'm one of the collection managers here at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo and I'm here today with our colobus monkeys Kido and Rozzy and I'll be answering some of your primate questions. Currently we're able to rotate three of our primate species out in this space. Our potus monkeys, our colobus, and our cymags. And it can actually be really enriching to come out here on a rotating basis because when the cymangs come out, if the colobus were out here the day before, the cymangs get to experience the smells of the colobus monkeys and get to explore and know that there was another species in that space. So it's actually very enriching as well to not have it on a regular basis. So they might not know when we come in in the morning and start to interact with them if they're going out to primate park or not. And that can be really stimulating because they're kind of always on their toes run, wondering what's going to be happening next. The next question is, what games do different primate species like to play? So a lot of times when you think of monkeys and different primates, people think of them as very active and very jumpy and climbing and swinging and constantly moving. And that's not always the case. They do need to rest during the day, just like they would in their wild habitat, between feedings. However, they do have a playful side and you can find them playing quite often. One of the number one things they like to do is wrestle, especially the youngsters. Our potus monkeys are very playful, especially the two younger ones, and they will wrestle with each other, but they'll also try to engage the adults in play as well. Another thing they like to do is interact with their keepers. So we do regular training sessions with them, but a lot of times they'll come right up to us and interact with us through the glass. They'll make faces, they might pat at the glass, or they might just start rolling around and interacting in a way that we can interpret as them playing. Hi guys, my name is Lucas and I am the outdoor bird zookeeper here at the Roseman Gifford Zoo. And I have with me here Anakin, one of our Harris Hawks. And what we are doing today is one of my favorite activities here at the zoo, a hawk walk with our two Harris Hawks. And what a hawk walk is, is a very enriching activity that we do with the hawks where we let them go. We put telemetry on them, um, radio telemetry, and we take them off the leash and we let them go up in the trees and we let them do a little bit of free flying. And this is very enriching for the, the hawks here. Um, when we talk about enrichment, you want to do an activity that mimics things that the animals would do in the wild. And this certainly is one of them.
production manager here for Rosemont Pepper Zoo. And today I'm going to be throwing some bugs to our Inca terms. Um, usually they eat fish in the wild, but this is a good way to uh, encourage the natural behavior of theirs. Because normally they would fly over small groups of fish that surface and swoop down and grab those fish out of the water. This is a really good exercise for them, and it's also good enrichment for them. We do this every day uh, with these particular birds to make sure that they get an important mineral and vitamin mix that they don't get in their fish because it's frozen. So we like to keep up this behavior and make sure that they're nice and useful. Hi, I'm Seth Grosbeck. I'm one of the animal collection managers here at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo. I oversee the hoofstock and the carnivore departments here at the zoo. And with me here today is Chooch, our miniature Mediterranean donkey. Chooch has, was born here at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo and she's now 21 years old. So she's been with us a long time. And today we're going to answer some of your hoofstock questions. So our first question is, how big do bison grow? We have five bison here at the Rosemont Gifford Zoo. They range from our youngest, um, who is Madison. He's about a year old, will be a year old soon, all the way to Harley, who is our adult male. Generally speaking, male bison can get anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds and stand six feet tall at the shoulder. And female bison tend to be a little bit smaller than that. They can be between 700 and 1,200 pounds and stand about five feet at the shoulder. Our next question is, why do we brush our camels and what do we use the hair for? So here at the Roseman Gifford Zoo, we have two camels. We have George and Patrick, who are brothers, who came to us from the Milwaukee County Zoo. And every spring we go through a process with George and Patrick where they shed out their winter coat. Um, it's pretty neat to watch. There was a video earlier this week with one of our keepers that you got to actually see them be brushed. Here at the zoo, we actually do use a lot of the camel hair for enrichment and give it to other animals so they can uh, see it and smell it and look at it. Um, we also do find at times when the camel hair is blowing around the exhibit, some of our native birds here will actually grab it and use it for nesting materials. Our next question is, where are Takan native to and what are some of their adaptations they have? Takan are native to Asia. They come from the Himalayan mountains, which is quite cold. So our winters here in Syracuse actually work out really well for them. They tolerate our cold temperatures very well. Takan have several adaptations to handle that cold weather. They actually secrete an oily substance from their skin, which helps protect their hair. And they also have a secondary coat, which also keeps them extra warm. Keepers here at the Rosamond Gifford Zoo, and this is Timbu. Um, hopefully, you can see him. He just turned away. He is our eight-year-old Amir Tiger, and we're going to be doing some training with him today for you guys to watch and check out at home. So stay tuned. Here, so guys, this was a training session with our Amir Tiger, Timbu. 
Um, training is really important here at our zoo and zoos all around the world because um, it creates a really positive relationship with us and the animals that we're working with and then it allows us to be able to see different parts of the animal and make sure that they're as healthy and as fit as can be. And it's also really great for them because it's very mentally stimulating. So for him, Timbu knows how to target, which means I offer my fist and he touches his nose to where my fist is along the chain link. And that allows us to position him in different areas, be able to check him out. He'll stand up and show us his belly so we can see all of his fur and then we can also check out his paw pads and make sure that his toes and his feet are all good. Um, Timu will open his mouth and we can check out his teeth and um, his mouth and tongue, make sure that there's nothing wrong with any of that area. Um, he knows how to give both of his paws and he knows how to lean in for injections. So if he needed like a vaccine or something like that or if he needed to do some veterinary work with him, he can give us his shoulder, we give him a shot and it's nice and simple. Um, so Timu really generally enjoys um, doing these sessions with us and it's also great for us. Um, like we said, it helps keep him mentally stimulated. Um, learning new things really engages the brain and is awesome for not just Timbu and tigers, but all of our animals here at the zoo. Our Fennec Foxes, Pink and Taz. Pink is seven years old and Taz we recently got back in October and he is four. So these guys are found in desert habitats in Africa and they have very large ears that you'll see and they use that for foraging. It helps them listen for food underneath the sand and help locate it.
Our Komodo dragon is one of the animals I care for. Naga is a female Komodo dragon and she's about seven years old. So about five to seven years old is how long um, it takes for them to pretty much reach adulthood. So she's almost done growing. She's gonna be a little bit longer and put on a little more weight. But Komodos are one of the largest dragons or actually the largest dragon in the world. They're not the longest type of lizard in the world, but they are the largest. 